Ave Maria. Anyone who has been following these short introductions to the thought of Blessed John Duns Scotus will recognize how many times allusions, references have been made to the concept of the will and to freedom. And to anyone who has followed regularly discussions of SCOTUS over the past six months will realize that probably the vast majority of Catholic theologians and scholars at the present time consider the views of SCOTUS on the will rather shaky, to put it, mi uh, put it mildly, that he is responsible for introducing a kind of voluntarism, a concept of the will, as radically arbitrary. The will is independent of any intellectual, rational norm that if God wishes, because he is omnipotent, he can declare today good what yesterday he said to be evil. Our first observation on this should be such an account of the divine will does not recognize the radical difference between the absolute perfection of the divine will and the radical imperfection or limitation of the created will. How could someone as brilliant as, and as holy as John Duns Scotus ever have proposed such a thing of God? Well, this is clean contrary to the scriptures, the teaching of the fathers of the church, such great luminaries as St. Bonaventure and blessed St. Thomas of Aquinas. Indeed, it does reflect the views of William of Ockham, but here I simply wish to make a point. If Scotus said things like this, of course he is wrong. But we must recognize that on this point, Ockham broke with Scotus. He did not follow Scotus, as he did not follow Scotus on the question of the Immaculate uh, Conception and so many other questions uh, touching the nature of no uh, knowledge. That's the first historical observation. Secondly, what we must also examine is the exact relationship between the intellect uh, and the will. It is true. In us, and if we only consider the psychology of the matter, the will as we experience is perfectly true. The will does seem to be subordinate to the intellect, that we cannot choose unless we are first informed, unless we know, unless we have some intellectually perceived norm, we're unable to act in any kind of free, voluntary fashion, let alone responsible fashion. And so we all naturally uh, recognize the arbitrary will, the will that acts independently of intellectual reflection, is not a good will. It's bad will. We all recognize that as the uh, essence of tyranny. That's how a tyrant, a cruel dictator, Herod the Great, for instance, and there are many examples in ancient times, as they are in modern times. We need to only think of the 20th century and our present days. This is the mark of the terrorist who, to enforce his own will, intimidates others. Our natural spontaneous reaction is to hate that sort of thing. And we cannot blame a person who resents being treated like a robot. That is not the concept of Scotus. He distinguishes between a will that is perfect, the divine will, and one which is imperfect, our wills are not naturally rational. We depend upon knowing what is good. We cannot determine that ourselves. But God's will is all perfect. His knowledge of the good is himself. It is not without his will, it is within his will. And there Scotus would tell us we must advance one step further. Not to compare God to ourselves, 
but to reflect on those things that we recognize as precious in the will, the basis, really, of our personhood, of having a, not simply able to act freely, but having a certain, certain dignity. What is the nature of the voluntary action that does seem to transcend the merely natural? The highest form of the natural action is the intellect. All of the natural actions reflect more or less the naturality of the intellect. As Scotus insists, the intellect is determined by the object contemplated. The intellect does not freely, nor may the intellect freely produce the object as though the hypotheses that we construct have an absolute value because we constructed them. This leads to, you guessed it, skepticism. We can't know whether or not there's any correspondence ultimately between the hypothesis and what is called extramental reality. This is why Scotus calls understanding, even though it is completely imminent, uh, a natural act, and naturally reflects the extramental reality. Being is higher prior to understanding even in God. God is first being, uh, then understand. But what does it mean to be being, perfect being, with the ability to, to act on one's own, to initiate and not be initiated in acting, to move and not to be moved, to borrow Aristotle's famous phrase, I know, I differ from the natural world. I can initiate, I can introduce a new power into nature. Every artist, every scientist is doing that all the the time. But God, who is omnipotent, he can do anything. But it is never arbitrary, it is never capricious, it is never unreasonable. The root of reason is the perfect love, the perfect being of God. This is why being is prior to understanding. It's the famous debate between Scotus and Meister Eckhart in Paris. Meister Eckhart was the one who maintained understanding is prior. prior. And it is that thrust to understand, as it were, that leads, as it were, to to, to love. Scotus remark is it may be love of a kind, but it's not free, and if it's not free, if it's not voluntary, yeah. Thus, Scotus uh, insists, the essence of freedom is the essence of the voluntary act, which is to be able to initiate God, though he loves himself necessarily and cannot not love himself, uh, acts freely. And though we desire happiness necessarily, we desire it freely. This is the point of uh, the other things, contingently, even love of God, is, so long as we are not perfected by the light of glory. But I want to point out whether I love necessarily or contingent because the object is absolutely lovable and I am a perfect lover, or contingently because the object need not be, need not be loved. Uh, I do so freely, I choose. And that act is a supremely rational act. If I act in accord with the holiness, the goodness, the wisdom of God, this is where Scotus is coming from, and it is the finest uh, explanation of what it means to be free. Freedom is not license to do as I please. Freedom is the ability to guard and to enhance that gift of justice, that unique relationship, union, between my will and God's will. And where do we see the exemplar of this? In the created will of a created person, Mary Immaculate. Negatively, the Immaculate Conception is her immunity from any stain of original sin in view of the foreseen merits of her son. Positively, it is that perfect union, so perfect that her entire being is pervaded, permeated, by the holiness of God. God could not make a creature purer than the one whom he made his, 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 his mother to strive always to be like Our Lady, and we too will come to realize the freedom and uh, the goodness and the joy of the sons of God. Ave Maria.